customs and security scrutiny of inbound postal packages is much less, less. than mm -hmm. is applied to all other packages. The international drug dealers are very well aware of the situation. Uh, Jim Campbell, you're an internationally recognized postal policy expert and an attorney who's done a, a lot of work for uh, Federal Express. And you're also an expert on international postal policy issues like the Universal Postal Union. So could you tell us a little bit about it? What is the Universal Postal Union? Well, the Universal Postal Union, or UPU, as they say, is an intergovernmental organization that was founded in 1874. It's actually the second oldest intergovernmental organization. Mm -hmm. And it was organized to facilitate the exchange of mail between countries. Mm -hmm. In 1874, there were only 21 countries involved. Mm -hmm. It was very small. It has since grown to 192 countries mm -hmm. and includes virtually every country in the world. And it organizes the exchange of mail between the various national post offices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand that one of the main policy issues that's uh, come up, there's a number of them, uh, with regard to the Universal Postal Union is its setting of these things called terminal dues. So can you tell me what, what are terminal dues and why are they important? Why do we care? Sure. Terminal dues are charges that the post offices uh, pay each other for the delivery of inbound letter post, what mm -hmm. they call letter post. Now, the letter post is not only letters, mm -hmm. but it's all sorts of documents and small packages up to two kilos. Mm -hmm. or four and a half pounds. Okay. So terminal dues are, uh, are a problem uh -huh. because the post offices or the UPU has fixed these charges at rates that do not correspond to domestic postage. Mm -hmm. So for example, the United States charges uh, Germany or China for the delivery of an inbound package, uh, a, a, a rate for delivery that's significantly less than what mm -hmm. the Postal Service charges an American merchant for the same service. Mm -hmm. So Jim, the, the uh, Universal Postal Union and Terminal Dues is, is a pretty complicated structure. I understand there's four different groups of countries and the countries are categorized uh, that way for different terminal dues rates. Can you talk a little bit about that and how that might benefit or hurt uh, the United States? Sure, so what happens is, there, as you say, there are four different groups of countries. And the UPU has established different terminal dues rates for the four countries, depending on whether we're sending or receiving uh, documents and packages from these, these four countries. Mm -hmm. When the United States sends a package to, for example, Germany, which is in group one, mm -hmm. the Germans charge us a certain terminal dues rate. And is it in group one because it's a developed country? Because it's an industrialized country. Industrialized, It's okay. just the way group one is, is defined okay. as all the industrialized countries. Right. We send a package, the Postal Service sends a package to the German Post Office, and the Postal Service pays the German Post Office a certain charge for delivery of the package, mm -hmm. terminal dues. The German Post Office also sends packages to the United States, and the German Post Office charges, uh, pays us, the Postal Service, terminal dues for the delivery of inbound packages. Mm -hmm. the, the distortions come about because of two things. First, German postage in, is in fact a lot higher than American mm -hmm. postage. Mm -hmm. So when we pay the Germans uh, terminal dues, we are underpaying them mm -hmm. by a significant amount for the delivery of a German package. We're, we're paying them a lot less than German citizens right. would have to pay. So that benefits us. The same thing works the other way around. Mm -hmm. When the package comes to the United States, the German post office is paying us less than American mailers would pay. Mm -hmm. But American mailers would normally pay a lower rate. The mm -hmm. rates in general in the United States are lower than in Germany. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, on that simple exchange, the Postal Service is benefiting. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. if we each send each other one package, we've basically got a bigger discount than the Germans right. did. Right, right. If we send the Germans many more packages than they send us, the Postal Service benefits even more. On net, right. And that's mm -hmm. the his historically, and this was mostly used to be a document situation. Right. But historically, the U.S. Postal Service benefited because they were a net exporter of mail. Right, we were exporters and, on net. And historically, mm -hmm. the United States has supported this system. It was, it, it was distortionary, it was anti-competitive, but it was beneficial to the Postal Service. Right. So the U.S. has supported it. All right, the tables have turned in the last 10 or 15 years mm -hmm. because of the great increase in e-commerce. Right. And it's not so much coming from Germany, which pays us 
a certain level of terminal dues, but from countries like China and Singapore, which pay us a lower level of terminal dues. So China's and Sing they're in a different group. They're in a different right. group. China's right. in group three, Singapore's in group two. Okay. All right. And their terminal dues are, at least right now, lower Okay. for, for the same package. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's happening now is the United States has turned mm -hmm. from a net exporter into a net importer. Mm -hmm. Because of e-commerce. Because of e-commerce. Mm -hmm. And the United States is now being, and, and so is Europe, being flooded with e-commerce delivered by post from Asia, in mm -hmm. particular from Asia, but also from other countries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the United States right now seems to be, the Postal Service seems to be a net loser. Right. Although the Postal Service keeps very confidential all their accounts. Right. It looks like they are, uh, uh, they would be much better off if they charged foreign mailers the same as they charge American mailers. Mm -hmm. For the same, uh, so the just same have service. a level level playing field in right. terms so, of postage. So one number that does come out of the accounts of the Postal Service is that in 2017, mm -hmm. the Postal Service lost 170 million dollars on the import of uh, letter post items, that is, both documents and packages that were delivered at UPU rates. And wow, and is that 170 million because of this distortion in uh, terminal dues? Yeah, now the 170 million is the loss below out-of-pocket cost. Wow. All okay. right. The mm -hmm. undercharge, th the difference between what the Postal Service charged uh, the, the foreign post offices and what they charge Americans for the same service, the undercharge was substantially more than $170 million. Really? So maybe twice wow. as much. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's okay. the kind of uh, uh, negative impact that you mm -hmm. see on the Postal Service. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I say, the, the accounts are generally confidential, so it's really hard right. to, it's, so it's hard to get into the details of how this affects both. It's not really that transparent as we would like, so it's hard to know for sure. It's not transparent. The Postal Regulatory mm -hmm. Commission, which regulates the Postal Service, mm -hmm. is just now, just in the last few days, has been moving to try to make these accounts more, more transparent. So hopefully in the future we would be able to get a better handle on exactly how much money the Postal Service was losing because of this distortion right. in terminal dues. Is That's that right? right. So terminal dues are what one post would charge each other to deliver their mail within their country. So right. what we would charge Germany to deliver right. German mail within the United States. So I've heard that these, this issue is becoming more important because of global, global growing commerce, but also because of e-commerce and uh, people buying things over the internet. Can you talk a little bit about why terminal dues are becoming more important sure. over time? Sure, so what's going on is that the postal system at the international level is changing just like at the domestic level, but in fact, even more quickly. Mm -hmm. The decline of international documents has been dramatic over the last uh, two decades. But particularly documents. Documents, but mm -hmm. particularly the last decade. Mm -hmm. All right. On the other hand, international e-commerce, the shipment of packages by post has, so has, goods. has boomed. Think of goods. Right? Goods. Mm -hmm. With the, in fact, the, the UPU has recently changed the term to goods. Okay. And uh, so the economic consequences and, and, the, and the commercial consequences of the international postal system is essentially growing because mm -hmm. of their increasing involvement in e-commerce as, as opposed to simply shipment of documents. Okay. So there's a whole other dimension to this, which is, is really an epidemic in the United States, and that's opioids. And uh, particularly synthetic uh, opioids like fentanyl, which are many, many times stronger than heroin, and they're, they're killing you know, thousands of people uh, in the United States. And so there's, a, there's a, like a customs element to this, uh, a, a social element in the sense that this is a drug epidemic. And can you talk about how that plays into the UPU and the terminal dues issues? How is that related to both uh, customs security issues and the, the opioids? Right, so the, the beginning of the Postal Service's involvement in the carriage of packages goes back to the 1920s. And the 1920s agreements provide for very simplified customs treatment of postal packages. Relative to private shipments. Relative Is to private right? shipments. Okay. So in those days, the postal service, the international postal system, was carrying essentially only uh, social packages, you know, mm -hmm. grandma's knitted sweater and so okay. forth. Mm -hmm. All right. Over time, these simplified customs procedures have uh, developed into a, an essentially a UPU-defined postal customs clearance that is different from 
the customs clearance that the United States requires for mm -hmm. all other cargo and packages. Now you say different from, but that would be more lax. More, relative. more lax, more simplified. More simplified, okay. In the last 20 years, and particularly in the last 10 years, right, the, the dangers posed by an influx of packages has increased, right, both because of terrorist threats and because of the increase in drugs, uh, like the opi opioids. And so the UPU customs procedures have fallen further and further behind mm. what's really needed to control these, these, uh, these substances or these, these mm -hmm. uh, hazardous goods. So that's a problem which Congress is addressing right now mm -hmm. in something called the STOP Act. Uh, and as you, as you suggest here, uh, in addition to the fact that we are failing to really inspect these postal packages in the same way as we inspect non-postal packages, we are also underpricing the delivery mm -hmm. of these packages. So how, in a sense, so? mm -hmm. the post, because of the terminal dues. So in a sense, uh, we are not only failing to inspect these packages uh, adequately, mm -hmm. but we're also undercharging or even subsidizing mm -hmm. the delivery of mm -hmm. these dangerous packages. And Jim, I, if I understand correctly, that subsidy or that, that discount, whatever term we want to use, the terminal dues that one country charges another is, are too low. So for the United States with increasing importation from China, you know, we're, the Postal Service is really losing money on a lot of those. Why, why is that? Why would they uh, do something like that where, where they're losing money? Why, why aren't they charging more reasonable uh, terminal dues? Okay, so we are, um, and, and this is really a question of historical practice that's, that's uh, developed, but we are undercharging for the delivery of packages. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, and we are charging, the, under the UPU agreements, we charge different rates to, to different countries. Mm -hmm. So we charge Germany, for example, a bit more than we charge China. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. for all countries, the Postal Service is charging for the delivery of foreign packages, something like 40 or 50 or maybe 60% mm -hmm. of what we charge Americans for the same service. So it's a, it's a fairly large discount mm -hmm. that we're giving to foreign uh, shippers. And now, with the growth of e-commerce, we're giving that discount to foreign merchants. Uh, so, Jim, one uh, really compelling question is this issue of how opioids are getting into the United States. And I understand that sort of studies of, by uh, Congress and others that, of how it's happening is that those uh, opioid shippers actually recommend the use of the U.S. Postal Service relative to private shippers when they're sending opioids into the United States. That seems like a, a shocking Revelation. Can you talk about uh, how that relates to postal policy and why would these these drug dealers do that? Sure. It's 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 very clear that the customs and, and security scrutiny mm -hmm. of inbound postal packages is much less, less. than mm -hmm. is applied to all other packages, whether it's FedEx and UPS or, or the private shippers, the private uh, mm -hmm. freight forwarders or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's very clear that the merchants of the world understand this. Okay. And so that if you call up a foreign merchant and ask for, let's say, a sweater from mm -hmm. Japan, mm -hmm. uh, they will recommend that the sweater is shipped by the Postal Service rather, or by the international postal system rather than by a private carrier because the likelihood of having to pay duty is very little. Okay. It, th these packages are just not scrutinized mm -hmm. uh, very much uh, by, by um, by customs and security. Mm -hmm. The international drug dealers are very well aware of the same situation. Okay. And so, as you say, a recent Senate study indicates that uh, the manufacturers of illegal drugs like fentanyl mm -hmm. recommend to their customers in the United States that it be shipped to the United States via the post office mm -hmm. and not by one of the private carriers. I understand it's, it's so so strong that they, they only guarantee delivery if it's actually done through the U.S. Postal Service, but if you do it through a private shipper, they don't guarantee delivery. Is that correct? Well, I'm, <laughs> I have to say I've heard that, but I don't know of my own personal knowledge. Mm -hmm. So I think we all, we, we're excited about the STOP Act. We all think that the STOP Act is a step in the right direction. But I, and we think it'll become law, probably, but I don't think anyone is, is uh, suggesting that the STOP Act is, is really a, a solid solution to this problem. So as a postal 
uh, attorney and postal, uh, international postal expert, what would your solution be? Uh, I mean, this is a major uh, social and security problem. So what would you recommend we do in terms of steps toward policy solutions? Well, the, the, the STOP Act is a step forward in terms of customs and security. Uh, it's not a complete solution, but it's a step forward. Mm -hmm. But it does nothing for terminal dues or other issues. Mm -hmm. uh, we can, uh, the, the, in fact, the president uh, issued a memorandum, instruction to the Secretary of State mm -hmm. on August 23rd mm -hmm. that basically said do something about the terminal dues, make sure that we're not giving foreigners a better rate than we're giving Americans mm -hmm. for the same service. Mm -hmm. Seems reasonable. Um, so far, not much has happened, but the, um, you know, my understanding is, is the White House is reviewing this whole situation and is looking at some way to, to solve it. Now, over the long term, what's needed is clearly a reform of the UPU. Okay. It needs to get out of the business of fixing prices. It needs to probably get out of the business of, of, uh, of overriding national customs and security mm -hmm. provisions. Mm. Uh, and the whole legal basis of the UPU um, is a matter that needs to be reconsidered in light of the requirements of the U.S. Constitution and uh, the needs of the United States. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a long-term project. Difficult right. to change a big inter right. intergovernmental organization. Right. In the shorter term, the United States could, consistent with the UPU in fact, we could make a special arrangement with uh, selected post offices. Now, we only receive a large number of packages mm -hmm. from a fairly small number of countries. Mm -hmm. And you could imagine some sort of an agreement among these bilateral countries. Bilateral agreements. Mm -hmm. Bilateral or even multilateral with, mm -hmm. say, the other industrialized countries. Mm -hmm. And then the big exporters of, of e-commerce, like mm -hmm. China and Singapore and Korea. All right. Or, and that kind of an agreement, um, which revised the terms for delivering inbound packages, which applied uh, stricter controls on customs and security information. Mm -hmm. right? That kind of an agreement would, would still be compatible with the UPU and would provide a substantial improvement mm -hmm. in the situation you know, probably that could be done in the, in the short term, within a year or so. Okay. Let's, uh, the presidential memorandum from August, very interesting. Can you talk a little bit about the, uh, the impact of this uh, current structure on small business in the United States? One, one company that's kind of become the poster child is Mighty Mug, uh, which, you know, an imitation mug in China was uh, produced pretty quickly, and they were, you're actually able to buy that cheaper uh, from China than you are from Mighty Mug based in the United States. Uh, but I w wonder if you could give us your views on how the UPU structure with these uh, terminal dues being so distorted uh, has affected small business and maybe other businesses in the U.S. Right, so, so businesses in the United States, particularly online merchants, which are selling relatively low value items, mm -hmm. uh, in which the, the cost of transportation is a significant part of the final price. Mm -hmm. Those sorts of companies are hurt by the fact that the Postal Service is charging foreign merchants less than American merchants for the same service. Mm -hmm. And this has been a matter that has been subject to a lot of complaints by uh, mom and pop businesses in the United States, mm -hmm. all the way up to Amazon, which wow. testified in Congress mm -hmm. uh, and called for uh, a fix to this system. So this is, a, in fact, a long-running uh, problem that affects a lot of American businesses. Mm -hmm. So I want to uh, just, what, I guess, one, one final question that's come up. You know, there's many different dimensions to this. But one is just, this is an international agreement. But if I look at the Constitution, you know, I know there's treaties that are binding on the United States and have to be ratified in the United States Senate. Uh, which seems to be a good provision of the Constitution. So can you talk a little bit about the legality of the UPU in a, agreement and how binding that is on the United States government? So the, the international postal agreements are not treaties and they are not reviewed okay. by the Senate. Mm -hmm. They are what's called executive agreements. It is long established in the United States that the president can make agreements uh, within certain areas, uh, particularly if he's, if he's authorized by Congress mm -hmm. to make such agreements. Right? In the case of postal agreements, the Congress has long authorized the Postmaster General and now the Secretary of State to make international postal agreements. Mm. But although they are negotiated by the State Department, they still have to be approved by the United States. Right. In the, and in the case of the current 
terminal dues agreement, concurrent uh, UPU convention, which uh -huh. includes the terminal dues, that agreement was adopted by the UPU in 2016. It went into effect January 1, 2018, mm -hmm. but it has never been approved formally by the United States government. Hmm. So apparently the 2016 uh, UPU agreement and the terminal dues are not legally binding on the United States, mm -hmm. although there's still some dispute among various lawyers about yeah. that. Could you just say a, a few, like how does that compare to other international agreements like NAFTA? Like a major trade agreement, is is it less uh, less secure, in some sense, in a in a legal sense, less less clear uh, than a than a international trade agreement, or is it is it a similar process? It's it's similar to international trade agreements. In the case of NAFTA, that was that was likewise an executive agreement authorized by Congress, but then Congress had to subsequently approve it. Mm. All right. In the case of the international postal agreements, they are not subsequently reviewed by Congress. Mm. Uh, but mm -hmm. that doesn't that doesn't undermine the legality if it's officially approved by by the State Department and by our partner countries mm -hmm. then it's a it's an agreement very much like a treaty that is binding on the United States under US law Jim thanks for coming and sharing your expertise on international postal issues it's great to have you here pleasure as always Rick thank you hey everyone that's the end of our discussion with Jim Campbell international postal policy expert Thanks for watching. As always, let us know what other topics you'd like AEI scholars to cover on Viewpoint. And to learn more about international postal policy issues, check the links in the description below.